When it comes to servers, server administration, and just usage of applications, we've really hit a new frontier. And that's going to be the new age of servers, which specifically is going to be under containerization and the application Docker. So starting off with the basics, we kind of need to walk through how we got here, right? So bare metal solution is going to be the most basic. It's um, probably what you're going to run into the most, and everything has to run on bare metal at some point, right? So working through applications in bare metal means you're going to have a classic installation. You're going to be in the command line, uh, pulling packages, configuring software, setting configuration files by hand, right? Um, this is manual. It's a bit more difficult to back up. You have to have a um, separate backup server or some way of backing up your data. And the benefits, though, is that's going to have the least overhead. Uh, bare metal is running directly on bare metal, right? So you don't have to deal with any kind of overhead in terms of virtual machines or containers or anything like that nature. So bare metal is always going to be the fastest, but it's also going to be not very scalable. What came around um, a few years ago, by a few years ago, I mean a few decades, right? Uh, we've got virtual machines, or like a, uh, a computer inside of a computer. So this is going to have a classic installation as well. You can um, definitely set up some configurations and get some custom scripts going or some custom configuration files that'll do a lot of the heavy lifting for you, but you're still going to have to do a lot of manual configuration. Again, it's going to be pretty much a server inside of a server. So if you had to set the configuration file on the server, you have to do the same thing on a virtual machine. Um, some benefits this, of this though is that it's really easy to back up. Um, there's tools built into virtual machines that'll do this for you. You can save them as images that you can really quickly boot or you can pull down, pull one down and then you can you know, copy it and run it as a virtual machine on top of it and you know, scale it out that way a bit more uh, horizontally, right? Um, but this is going to have a lot of overhead, especially when we look at these three options today. It's going to have the most overhead, um, which is definitely going to be a downside when it comes to um, getting the most bang for your buck or the most computing performance for uh, your hardware, right? Um, and lastly, that's going to leave us with a containerized solution. Um, this is, you know, the most modern uh, and the most uh, new technology. Um, these go through YAML installations. They have automated configurations. Um, they're super easy to back up, just about as easy to back up as a virtual machine. And then it's going to have some overhead. So it's going to be sitting somewhere in the middle of bare metal and virtual machines. And let's kind of get into how this all works, right? So why Docker? Um, Again, so you're going to have lower and you're going to have scaled utilization. You're going to have better management and it's going to have quicker setup. So talking about lower utilization, you know, how do we measure this, right? So you've got disk space, network usage, and processing power is kind of the main ones I'm going to look at here. You, of course, have memory as well, um, but there's and there's additional overhead here, but those are going to be the core factors we're going to be looking at. We kind of ran, uh, lump uh, RAM and memory usage into processing power, right? So again, looking at this uh, kind of data I put on the bottom here, you're going to have least utilization to most utilization. What you're going to see, of course, least utilization is going to be a bare metal server. So you have the host, and then you have the apps on top of it, and that's it. Uh, looking at the most utilization, you're going to have a virtual machine uh, server with multiple virtual hosts. So that's going to have the host, the hypervisor, and then for each application you're running, you're going to have to have a virtual host on top of that, which is entirely redundant. So it's going to cost you the most disk space to have multiple virtual hosts. It's going to cost you the most processing power because not only do you have to feed the, uh, the host machine, but you also have to heat, feed both virtual hosts or however many virtual hosts you have at the same level, right? That's going to have a fair bit of um, processing power that you're going to have to draw for that because you are essentially running however many hosts you have plus the base host, right? Um, kind of scaling back from that, you can look at a virtual host, a hypervisor, and multiple applications running inside of that virtual host. So that's going to reduce your uh, consumption a good bit and your disk space a good bit because you're going to have multiple apps sitting inside of one host instead of multiple hosts, each containing one app. But we can do a bit better. So this is where containerization and uh, Docker are going to come into this, right? So you're going to have the host still, but then on top of that you have a container a application, and this is going to be Docker in this instance. Um, and what it's going to do is it's going to use a fair bit of the um, host resources, mainly the kernel. It's going to pull that, it's not going to have to run its own. And then what you're going to get from that is containers. And these containers can hold applications, they can hold multiple applications, but the most common way to do it, and the uh, probably the best practice, is to have each application inside of its own container. 
So you know, if you're looking at a web server here, you could have the uh, the the back end, and then you could have a database separated from it, right? Um, and this just costs a lot less power um, in terms of processing power, and then you're going to save disk space as well because you don't have to download the kernel for each application or each container, that's going to be from the host. So you get to save a lot of resources there. And then I think network usage is gonna be the most um, kind of harder to wrap your head around here. So there's a few different ways to look at this, right? So um, network usage is going to be the heaviest if you have multiple bare metal servers with a single application on each that have to communicate with each other um, because you're gonna to have to have data going through wires, um, which is going to be you know pretty costly. Um, the next solution here is um, going to be either with a virtual machine or a container application. So these are going to be able to do a lot of the network usage, just container to container or virtual host to virtual host. So that means you don't have to actually send it cross copper wire or cross fiber wire. What it's going to do instead is um, have the application move through like the local host of the machine or some kind of configuration like that. Um, where virtual hosts on hypervisors are likely going to have their own separate network. It's not going to be running on local host. And then containers have their own network as well. A Docker network is what you're going to see on Docker. Next thing is going to be scaled utilization. So let's say you have an application. And these are um, four or three instances of actual servers I run. So if you have a bare metal server, um, if you maximize the resources, you have a few options. Um, primarily, you're going to have to put on a new server or you could of course upgrade the server you're working with as well um, so that's going to be you know pretty costly you're gonna to have to provide all the components all the networking and everything to get a new server online or at least to upgrade the parts so let's do better right um, that's where virtual machines are going to come in um, with these if you need to let's say have an application need more resources you have to stop the instance, you're going to have to modify the resources, whether that means giving it more processors, giving it more storage, or giving it more um, memory utilization, and then you have to restart the instance. That's going to cause downtime, and it's going to just not be a great experience if you're an end user trying to use that server, right? Um, and then lastly, we're going to have the Docker container. And what's amazing about Docker containers is they don't actually share resources the same way as a virtual machine. They actually share it much closer to a bare metal server. So if you're looking, um, this virtual machine I'm running has four cores um, where the Docker container um, actually has access to all 20. So this is a server with 20 cores. It's actually 10 cores and 20 threads, but 20 cores, right? And um, it's able to scale out across all of those. And you can also set limits if you don't want to do that per se, but it's able to, by default, take advantage of all the resources of the server. So if you need to scale that utilization, it'll automatically do that. And the only way you're going to run into issues is if you maximize out the entire usage of that server, at which point it's very similar to a um, just a regular bare metal server. We're going to need to either add a new server or upgrade the parts in your server, right? So another thing I think is really important about Docker is better management. So on bare metal, you have a few options. Um, of course, on the right over here, you're going to have, you know, dedicated access to that server, right? So, you know, you plug in through a KVM console or KVM over IP, and you're going to directly access that server. You have a few other options as well. Um, IPMI is the super micro solution here. Um, Dell has iDRAC, and it's going to give you um, pretty much bare access to that server just over an IP connection, right? So um, this is IPMI. It's on a server I run. Um, and you're able to, you know, get really fine-tuned and fine-grained resource uh, understanding. And this isn't something that any other solution is really going to have. It's going to tell you, you know, power usage. It's going to let you configure different uh, fan controls, BIOS settings, update the BIOS remotely. Um, and it's also going to give you access to the actual server. It's going to give you a, a console where you can actually, you know, modify the BIOS or you can actually just directly access the machine. Um, problem with these is they're not great solutions in a lot of ways. Um, most of my hardware is several years old, so I can't talk about the newest hardware, but you often have to install Java applications or there's a lot of you know, uh, non-modern features that's really just difficult to manage and it takes time to set up and learn how to use. Um, your other two options, of course, are going to be SSH uh, or PuTTY, you know, which is also SSH, but it gives you know, a bit more fine-tuned controls. 
Um, and this is great unless the server goes down, right? And then what do you do? You have to go on site or you have to use, again, a solution like IPMI or iDRAC. Moving forward, we can look at virtual machines. So again, you're going to be able to SSH or use PuTTY, whatever you prefer, to get into the server. But what you're going to also have the option to do is run the server through a manager. So that's going to be your hypervisor. And the hypervisor is going to give you, you know, pretty fine-tuned access. Definitely not to the degree of bare metal, but it's going to give you pretty nice access to modify drivers, um, display outputs, uh, system utilization uh, in terms of like RAM, processing power, uh, storage. You know, you can uh, networks. You can modify all of that from the hypervisor host. And then you can also, if you're having an issue with configuration and can't get, let's say, um, network connection up for any reason you can directly access the server just through the application. So I think that's better, um, but again, I think we can do better and I think containerization is really the answer to that. So containers have a lot of options by default, which I think is what's best. Or, um, and then not only do you have a lot of options by default, but you can also install additional solutions. So in the bottom right here, you're gonna see an application called Portainer. And this can, uh, application portainer lets me access um, containers, networks, images, it lets me build new images using a GUI, uh, and it lets me easily, more easily access them. So I have you know, the ability to directly connect to them over Bash, um, and also just manage them uh, from you know, a bit of a higher level than directly on bare metal. Um, but if you did want to use bare metal, um, if you're going to look on the left here, we're going to have Docker. This is the actual engine that runs everything, right? And it comes with a bunch of core utilities you can use. Um, the one I have right here showing is Docker PS, which is going to show the ports, um, the status, when it was created, the command last run, and the, uh, the names and the images, right? So this is going to give you the ability to you know, figure out um, what's going on with the server. Is it up? Is it down? Um, and it's also going to let you modify these controls too with some different Docker commands. And then up here, over here on the right, you're going to see kind of the configuration I use for one of my servers. So I have you know two files here plus an image. So it's a Docker Compose, which is that YAML file that you're going to use to actually build it out. And then I have a run.sh file as here uh, as well here, which is going to do kind of a lot of the heavy lifting. So all I have to do is you know run bash run.sh. Um, and I just think this is a lot cleaner, a lot smoother, and honestly, just so much faster than virtual machine, or of course, much, much faster than bare metal. And again, uh, quicker setup, right? So this is kind of my workflow, um, personally. Um, so over here on the right, we've got a generic Docker Compose file. So this is um, from uh, NNNK7777. Um, I just pulled it off of GitHub so you can see a generic Docker Compose file. So it uses YAML and um, it, it kind of lets you build containers, networks, and everything you need. Um, so you can, you know, write once and run anywhere. Um, so to do that, I, you know, write it on my local machine. I do a git pull on the server and then I do a Docker Compose up flag D. I'm just going to run it as a daemon and that's all you have to do. Um, Everything's configured. You can then usually, if it's a web application, just directly access it, or whatever kind of application it is, you can just access it based on the configuration settings you set, right? And let's say that's you know a bit too complex for what you're doing. If you just need to really quickly get a new Ubuntu image, let's say um, this command down here is going to be um, actually a super easy way to set up a you know really quick test instance of test instance of Ubuntu. So right here you've got Docker run flag it set the entry point to bin bash, you know, the application you want to open, bash, and then you use the image Ubuntu latest. And that's going to let you really quickly, if you need to test something out in, uh, you know, a new server that doesn't have any configuration, you run that command, you are inside of a, an Ubuntu image just like that. So I just think it is super fast to set up and just a really great developer and administrator experience. Uh, and lastly, I want to highlight some more containerization features here, right? So logging, Docker has logging built into it. You can usually do a Docker log on the image name. Um, security, um, I think is one of the best parts about Docker. So um, everything is run through a Docker network and the only exposed ports are the ports you allow. Uh, most images do not come with um, a package manager by default. And if someone gets access to your Docker image, 
if you've configured it properly, it should be pretty hard for them to do any real damage uh, to your server or find out any you know information or files you have contained inside of that server, right? Um, next great feature is going to be infrastructure as code. So I think this is super important in a cloud-ready world, um, right? So this is again that write once run anywhere. Um, you write your Docker YAML file, and you can you know throw it on AWS. You can throw it on a local Docker server. You can throw it on you know Linode, uh, Azure, whatever you prefer, right? So it makes it really easy for you to write a script and just run it where you need to. And um, what's really great about that is um, if you you know write it, it's going to run anywhere that has a Docker engine, right? Uh, with, you know, some limitations, if you're using Docker for Windows, it's gonna change versus using, you know, Docker for Linux, which is what most people use. But pretty much, it doesn't matter if it's Ubuntu or Red Hat or SUSE, it's gonna run. Um, on top of that, another great feature is gonna be orchestration. So um, I've been showing examples of Docker Compose with those YAML files and also just how to run it directly with the Docker engine. But you can put on top of that an application like Kubernetes, which is going to let you orchestrate and kind of configure scaling um, based on certain limitations and certain you know features you want to set. So that's going to be really great. Um, I think the orchestration orchestration features of containerization just blow out of the water um, virtual machines and bare metal. Another one is cloud native, um, but I also want to highlight its cloud uh, highlight its cloud optional. So I run all of my Docker containers on a bare metal server, but if you want to, again, throw this up on AWS or Google Cloud Platform or Azure, it's gonna work right out of the box pretty well. Um, and then lastly, I think this is really important, is ready-made containers. So virtual machines have this to a degree as well, and you can also find some solutions like this for bare metal servers, but over here on the right, I've got um, Docker Hub, which is just hub.docker.com. You find the image you're looking for. There's usually um, examples of scripts of how to, you know, write a YAML file or run it uh, through the Docker engine. And just like that, in about five minutes usually, you can just have a container ready to go. Um, and those are really the core features of why I think containerization really is the new frontier um, and why um, I think it's going to be just a great feature that's going to continue to build out and continue to be um, more developed upon in the future and why I think you guys should get into it. Um, and I think um, it's it's really a tool that most developers and system administrators should learn. Um, so let's um, actually jump into a bare metal server uh, running Docker Engine and um, see what the uh, the workflow looks like. So let's get started with the um, easiest and quickest way to get a uh, Docker server up, right? So first, let's just do a Docker flag V. Uh, this is running on Debian, if you're wondering. Um, and you'll see we're running a version 20.10.8. Um, and I already have you know Docker installed and Docker configured. So let's get an Ubuntu image up like uh, I showed in the uh, presentation earlier, right? So just running that command I had, it's going to be docker run flag it. So at the entry point, we're going to do, again, we're just going to go directly into bash so we can get direct access to it. I'm going to use the image, Ubuntu, latest. And um, so what you're going to see is I'm not running the, ver or owning the latest version of Ubuntu. So what it's going to have to do is it's going to have to pull it down. Uh, it's going to pull this down from Docker Hub. And just like that, like I said, we're inside the container, right? So we can do a few things here. Um, what you're going to see, um, if you're trying to run anything like HTOP, it's actually not going to be installed. But um, you have some core utility still, but this is um, pretty limited on um, what you can do. And um, it's really going to depend on the image you pull, how much is actually configured and how much is actually set up. But we have, again, access to everything on this server, right? So if I had it on the bare metal version, I have the exact same resource utilization available to me on this Docker container. Um, so we can quit out of there, we can clear, and yeah, you can see the root. You're gonna see it looks exactly like a generic install of Ubuntu, right? So we can, you know, really do anything here that you do on a regular virtual machine, uh, virtual machine or a bare metal host. Um, that's really all you need. So you can actually, you know, CD around to like let's say, say etc. apt, look around in here, and we can go to like uh, you know, cat sources list. Um, and you're gonna see so we're running Debian. Uh, uh, source and you're gonna have you know focal security focal multiverse main restricted and that's gonna be you know 
very dependent on the image you pull. But it's going to let you you know, do an apt update, let's say. Um, and again, this is going to give you access to anything on Ubuntu, right? So, you know, I tried to run uh, HTOP earlier and it didn't work. So we just do a apt install HTOP. And, you know, give it a second. And just like that, HTOP. And as you can see, again, we have access to every single core, every single gigabyte of RAM, and all of the swap space and all of the storage of this server. So, you know, you back out of here, um, do like a DF flag H. You're gonna see, we have, you know, um, overlay is actually what this is pulling from. We have everything here. So 86 gigabytes is how much space I have on this uh, server for the uh, root drive. And all 86 are here. You can even see that 18 gigabytes are being used and then that is not being used by uh, this image. That's actually the entire server. So that is um, at its easiest how you install Docker, right? Or how you install a uh, image on top of Docker. Um, and just like that, you can do an exit. And just like that, we're back into the bare metal server, right? So super easy to do. Um, and yeah, let's take a look at it actually in a Portainer real quick as well. So I hopped into um, Portainer here real quick, which again is running inside of a Docker container. So I'm managing Docker containers from Docker, which I think is super neat. But um, this is able to you know host multiple uh, machines, but we only have one here, which is going to be local, right? So if we hop into here, uh, it's going to give us you know all of this information, and let's just go directly into containers. So you're going to see you know all of the different images I run here. Um, but what we're going to want to look at is this one right here. This is the Ubuntu image we just pulled down. So it'll tell you the start time, it's created, the IP address it's running on, um, and the status, which is super nice. And you can, you know, duplicate right here, uh, recreate, which, you know, stop it and build it back up. You can restart it, you can stop it, you can kill it. It's, you know, you have full access here, um, which is really great. And you can do all of these from the command line in Docker Engine, or you can just do them directly right here, right? So it really depends on what you want to do and how you want to administrate your own uh, server. And, you know, you have that freedom to choose that how you like. And let's say, you know, uh, we were just inside of the server, but pull up a console right here, right? So just like that, it's the exact same command I got it to get it going. And we have the image right here. So again, we can see the root in ls we can see into etc apt you're going to see again same thing here so we can cat sources.list um, it's the exact same thing so um, you're able to just get access using um, your web browser which is super nice for if you want to add additional people but you don't want to give them direct access to the server or if you want to manage this remotely or if you just don't want to go in through SSH. Maybe you're using, you know, a Windows machine and you don't have PuTTY installed, or you don't have, you know, Windows Subsystem for Linux, and you don't want to, you know, SSH uh, or anything like that over PowerShell. It's right here. So that's really the amazing thing about this is just how much access you have and what you're able to do with that. So this is just again another way, another tool to access Docker containers. Um, so hopefully you guys, you know, found this information about containers useful, um, got you excited about them. Maybe you're going to try it out. Um, if so, definitely let me know in the comments if you want to see a, uh, a Docker installation and what that process looks like. Um, and we can definitely, you know, uh, see if we can get a video going like that. So thank you guys for watching and uh, hope you learned something today.